guys welcome back to no catchy name it's me ella and this is episode 172 i meant to film this on tuesday and i never got the chance so i'm filming it on wednesday but you're gonna see it on thursday <laughs> so i'm wearing the same shirt i was wearing yesterday and watch work on wednesday and that's because i just filmed it but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and hop in i got a bunch of finished objects one whip that i can show you because one's a secret one until friday and then i got a little bit of happy mail that i got and i got some books that i want to show you guys it has nothing to do with crochet but um I'm going to show it to you anyways. <laughs> so let's just hop in because there's a lot of finished objects. The first one I actually finished in April, but I forgot all about it. <laughs> and um, I don't have it. It's in here somewhere. It's in Jesse's room. I'm in Jesse's room. <laughs> Hence the monster cur or monster truck curtain. <laughs> but um, I forgot all about it and then I can't find it. But I do have a picture of it, so I want to search the picture. But he wanted one of those handy tissue pouches from Snappy Tots. Um for him to put a little tissues and hand sanitizer in and uh, I can't ever say no to him so <laughs> I made him one he picked out the colors they're a little crazy but he always picks out um interesting colors so he picked out red heart super saver um Takura or something like that I can't remember it's a turquoise color and then he also picked out I love this yarn uh it's the green metallic I don't know if it's called green metallic or something like that um uh, but he picked out that one <laughs> so I made it kind of half and half um, and he loves it. He has it already somewhere. I seen it yesterday, but I don't know why he did with it since then. <laughs> he loves hand sanitizer. He wants hand sanitizer all the time. But, uh, anyway, so that's technically an April finished object. I just completely forgot all about it. <laughs> um, because I whipped it up really quick for him one day. I didn't follow her pattern exactly. I meant to say that. It's same concept, same shape, but I didn't do the special stitch. I just did his in, um, I believe half double crochets because I wanted to get it done quickly. Um, so it's the same idea as her pattern, but it's different. <laughs> but I'll link her pattern down below. It is a paper pattern, but it's a really cute pattern and it's real handy. I have ours out in the truck, um, the blue one that I made before. Um, so that we have little tissues and some hand sanitizer uh, in the truck. So anyways, that was that. So next is, oh, I forgot to bring that book in here, but that's okay. I'll just pop in a picture. So next uh, in May, these are my May ones so far. <laughs> what is today? Today's the, the day that I'm recording this is 11th. The day you're seeing it is 12th. Um, so I got a lot of stuff done so far this month. So first out of my book, Whimsical Stitches, which I was gifted, um, a year or so ago, and it's by Laura, Lauren Epsi, I think is how you say it. I'll link it down below on Amazon. Um, it's usually like 20, $22. Uh, it, so it's paid for pattern technically because you gotta buy the book. I used an e-hook, <laughs> which is a 3.5 millimeter, and I made the strawberry. <laughs> I love strawberries. I'm always making strawberry things. I thought this was so cute. And I was just trying to find something quick to whip up the other day. I just heard Jesse sneeze. Um, and so I thought I'd make the little strawberry. I like the little blueberry too, so I'm going to have to make it too. But uh, I'm probably just put this somewhere in my living room. Because it's just cute. Or, um, I don't know, I'll put it somewhere. I love strawberries. So I used Red Heart Super Saver Cherry Red. And this is a green. I don't remember what it is because it's scrap ball. And I used a little tiny bit of black for the mouth. These safety eyes, I believe, are... I can't remember. If, I don't think they're six millimeter, but they're not 12 either. They're in between six and 12. <laughs> 10 millimeters maybe. And then the, the little seeds is just a little scrap piece of like a, a gold color. Again, I don't know what yarn it is because it's just scrap, but I think it's so cute. I love that little thing. But I'll link that book down below if you want to check it out. I love that book. I've made a bunch of stuff out of it and I'll probably keep making stuff out of it. But uh, there's my strawberry. Go ahead. Actually, I'm prepared today. I have a bag over here to drop all my whips in so it's easier for me to I mean, my finished objects. So it's easier for me to put them where they go afterwards instead of just throwing them in the floor. <laughs> so next, I made the Harry Potter themed um, scarves for the Harry Potter day. That was, I think, May 2nd. Um, so these I made with an H hook, which is a five millimeter. And I used worsted weight scraps. And I made all four of them. All right, quit moving. So here's Gryffindors, which I'm gonna give to my sister. I just, she hasn't been here since I made them. And then Hufflepuff, which I'll see if my brother wants because I'm pretty sure he's Hufflepuff. <laughs> and then Ravenclaw. I don't know Ravenclaw personally. <laughs> um, and then mine, which is Slytherin. Uh, so yeah, those are the little scarf bookmarks. Um, to be honest, I probably won't use mine as bookmark. Unless it's in a pattern book because I don't read a lot. I don't enjoy reading. <laughs> I wish I did. I always try and then I end up usually getting headaches when I try to read. And I read so slow that it's not enjoyable. <laughs> I would much rather listen to a book 
than um, to read one. So I'll probably end up setting this on like a shelf somewhere just to be a cute little scarf. <laughs> but uh, and my sister, I imagine, will do the same thing. And I don't know if my brother even wants one, but I'll ask him. <laughs> but there's my four little scarves. Now these these are a free pattern by Megan Meyer in uh, from Left and Knots, and. Uh, I believe she uses a DK weight yarn. I just don't have DK weight yarn. I have like a few random balls, but I don't have like a selection of colors. I really need to work on that, especially since I'm starting to make amigurumis with smaller hooks. I need to start buying smaller yarn. Um, so I need to start doing that. But uh, anyways, these are worth their weight. So there's those. Next is my alien hat that I made for um, National Space Day. This I didn't use a pattern. It is just a double crochet beanie. And then I made these little antenna thingies uh, just out, up in my head. Jesse's been wearing this. It's a little big on him because his head's a little bit smaller than mine. But not only a little bit because he has a big head. <laughs> but um, he likes it. He's been playing with it. So it's I guess it's his now. <laughs> so I'll probably just leave that in here. I'll throw it somewhere over on one of his toy boxes. Yeet. So <laughs> that uh, is Worsted White Yarn. It is Red Heart Super Saver Bright Yellow, the original Bright Yellow. And I used an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter. Uh, and then also for that same day, I made this cute little alien. I love this little alien. It is called Alan the Alien by Ollie and Holly. And it's made of the same yarn. It has uh, 20 millimeter safety eyes. I used scrap pink and black for the features. And he's so cute. I just love him. Let's see here. I used an elf hook for him, which is a 3.75 millimeter. And the same yarn. And he's just so cute. I like him a lot. I thought about keeping him. Jesse doesn't want him. I kind of thought he would, but I might, I'm, I've been saving up Amigurumi, so I might do an Amigurumi Etsy shop update soon, because some people have asked me to do that again, because they don't make Amigurumis, um, so he might go in that bag. I got a little bag that I usually put Amigurumis I'm going to either donate or sell in, and I do, the only thing I do say is I don't suggest them for kids under three, because of the safety eyes. They are hard to get out, but it is possible. I've pulled them out myself when I accidentally put them in the wrong spot. Um, but I will say, Jesse's always played with my amigurumis ever since he was like a year old, and he never got any out. But he wasn't the chewing kind of kid, and some kids, you know, chew on things. Um, so I don't suggest them for like three and under. Only kids that aren't chewing anymore. <laughs> or, uh, you know, you know, you're, you know your kid, or your grandkid, or whatever. So you know, um, you can judge by the way they act. But anyways, most of my amigurumis that I make are usually for like decoration purposes. I make them for older people or uh, older kids who know not to, you know, choke on their eyes. <laughs> Anyways, there's that pattern. Be linked below. What I'm trying to say. So for kids any younger, like three and under, I would do crochet eyes and I would sew them on really well. Um, and I do that like when I make um, loveys and things for baby showers and it's got like the head of an animal or something on it. I uh, make crochet eyes and sew the heck on there. <laughs> Even a little bit of fabric glue on there before and then sewed on there just so you know for sure that eyeball's not coming off. <laughs> all right, so next is all the stuff that I made um, out of some blue yarn for Stitch Your Stash. So you would have just seen this stuff recently, but I like to just round it all up and get it over with. So um, first is the Entertaining Doily by Sarah Satch. I absolutely love her. And like I said in that video, I didn't finish the whole doily because it bowled up and I didn't like that. But this is living underneath my new Swiss cheese plant. <laughs> I done pulled it out twice. Um, so I just wanted something to set that pot on so it just looks pretty, you know. And I got one, two, three. I got like four more plants that I need to make cute little things for. <laughs> but I want to do different patterns and different colors so that it just looks more eclectic because that's my style as you know as you can tell. <laughs> but um yeah so this is the first one. This is a free pattern by Sarah Satch and she also has a video tutorial so if you don't like reading patterns you can watch it or vice versa. She I'm pretty sure she puts out a video for all her tutorials which is really impressive. But um there it is it's cute. This is made with I love this yarn print um make noise for turquoise. <laughs> And it's, I don't know if you can see it good, but it's got like a lighter color blue mixed in with it. It's like it's, like it's um, speckled in there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was my doily for my Swiss cheese plant. I gotta put that back and then I won't have to move it anymore. <laughs> ah, my bag fell. All right, also I used F H hook, which is five millimeter. And then next I made the headband by uh, Sarah Satch as well. Same yarn, same hook. And it is another free pattern with a tutorial. And um, it's called the Summer Fun Headband. So there it is. 
It's a really simple pattern, works up quick. I mean, you can make it in like, I don't know, 20 minutes. <laughs> Very quick pattern. And it just goes like that, and then you would tie it under your uh, hair. I might end up making more of these in different colors, because I think this would be nice to wear like in the pool. <laughs> you know, keep those little fuzzy hairs out of your face while you're just relaxing on a float. <laughs> It's almost pool time here in Tennessee. I'm actually, my husband's going to help his dad put up their pool. They got a new pool this year, or they got it last year, but it's to put up for this year. Uh, so he already took down the old pool, and they're putting up the new pool. So anyways, anyways, I already said what this is. So that's a cute little pattern. Put that in my bag. Turn my page over. All right, next is my wind spinner, which does not look very good right now because it's all smushed up. But there's my wind spinner. <laughs> I still haven't dug out the tackle box out of this closet in here. Um, I got to dig it out. It's... Because it's, you know, it's been a while since we went fishing, so it's down in there somewhere. <laughs> and get one of those swivels, which people tell me, I knew it was something like that, uh, to attach to the yarn and then attach something else to it so that it can swivel away in the wind and not get tangled up. And, uh, or the yarn will, like, get so twisted that it'll snap. Um, I'm interested to see how long this is going to last in the elements. Um, this is acrylic yarn. And, uh, which is lighter than cotton. So if I made it out of cotton when it got wet... It would have one stayed wet longer because acrylic yarn is not very absorbent at all so it would have stretched i would imagine with the weight of the wetness um and it would take a longer to dry possibly could have got moldy if it was stayed wet and gross a few days um so i'm interested to see i know it will fade because acrylic yarn does fade i have a american flag wreath right now hanging on my door that the red is starting to turn orange because it's fading from being in the sun so i'm interested to see um how long this will last out on my porch and how often I might have to make new ones. Of course, if I like the way this looks and if it um, does good, I might make multiple of these and hang them up. Um, I need to make something to put over my window out there so that it will deter birds from hitting the window. Haven't had any hit the window yet this year, but I think last year one did hit the window. It didn't die though, it, it got up and flew off. Um, but usually if you hang stuff over your window or if you, you can put those little clings on there, it'll the birds will know that that's not actually sky because you know they see the sky reflected in the window and they think it's sky so they fly and hit it but if you put things on it um it'll know you know it'll see stuff and know that that's not sky <laughs> but anyways i thought about putting these there but they wouldn't spin because they'd be up against the glass but um anyways a beaded curtain would be cute but i imagine that would be loud <laughs> hitting you know like when the wind blows um yeah so anyways this is from Ophelia Talks so i'm trying to say <laughs> i got sidetracked it's a video tutorial i just typed in crochet wind spinner on YouTube and click the first one that popped up and it just happened to be hers. <laughs> um, I do the basic construction of one. It's basically like a curly cue, only instead of going back and forth, you cut the yarn every time and start back over at the front. Because if it was a curly cue, the curls would be tighter and I guess it wouldn't have the same spinning effect. Uh, yeah, so I also still want to make a tassel for the end of it. I just have to pick out a yarn that goes with this one. So that's my wind spinner. All right, the last make noise for turquoise thingy that I made is the small winter burst square by dragonfly mom of two which I'm wanting to make a whole bunch of these and then eventually put them together as like a scrappy afghan at some point so I have three blue ones so far put up and then now I have this one which is kind of blue <laughs> it's blue with different shade of blue in it so hopefully eventually I'll have other colors than blue <laughs> but um I love this pattern it's really pretty I think and it's really quick and easy and um oh, I just like it a lot so I plan on, um, I make these with H hook as well and more stoic yarns. I plan on making a whole bunch of them and then I'm going to go around in one solid color. Um, probably, probably a cream color or black because black would make it look kind of stained glassy. Um, and cream would just, <clears throat> and cream just goes with everything. So, <laughs> uh, do that and then attach them all and then do a border or something is my plan. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a bunch of squares until I, get enough to make a decent size afghan and uh attach them so it's probably gonna be months and months and months down the road but you'll be seeing these squares randomly up until then <laughs> and that is a free pattern like i said um h hook or sweat yarn h hook is five millimeter now the next thing is my secret whip which i'm going to show you tomorrow in stitcher library uh and then the last thing is my whip which hasn't moved at all since you've seen it in watch work on wednesday because I haven't worked on it because I just recorded that one as well. But it is my Mother Goose <laughs> I'm working on from Stringy Ding Ding. Uh, it is a free slash paid for pattern. You can get it for free on her blog, her website, or you can buy the PDF, or you can join the membership and get it as a free download. Um, 
along with the last 30 days. I talked about that yesterday, <laughs> but that's all I've got so far. But I'm slowly working on it. So I'm using Red Heart Super Saver, which is worse to weight, uh, white, and I'm using a G hook, which this one is a four millimeter. There are two G's in the US, <laughs> and it's four millimeter and 4.5 millimeter, but this is a four. Um, I don't know. This is a clover hook. So that's my only whip other than my secret one, which is another amigurumi, which I'll show you tomorrow. Um, I got it legs done, <laughs> but uh, I just, that's that's a lot of finished objects already for the first week of May, week in a little bit, but definitely better than April. <laughs> so now I got a little bit of Happy Mail I want to show you, and then some books. Um, so Happy Mail, oops, my first piece of Happy Mail is a thank you card, which is so pretty, flowers, which is from one of my giveaway winners. Uh, my last giveaway that was two project bags full of yarn for, it was the spring giveaway, and it's from Kathy, and I thought that's so cute, and here's the inside cards about the flowers and stickers <laughs> but I thought that was so sweet that she sent me I think you heard I appreciate that but uh and then I also got a Mother's Day card from Summer get the stickers out <laughs> there's always stickers I love getting cards from Summer because I always know there's stickers in it and it always makes me happy so she sent me this really pretty Mother's Day card so pretty and she wrote a sweet note in there and then she included stickers so I got a Care Bear some stars, some butterflies. Oh my gosh, I just not seen these. These are Shopkins. Jesse's got one tight. He likes Shopkins. And you know what? Our Walmart doesn't have any of them in there. We found some the other day that was like a, a different brand. It's called Little Little Pieces or something like that. But he wants Shopkins because um, he watches a Shopkins show and he likes the little, you know, it's just little food with faces. Um, Oh, I can't ever find any locally. I'm sure I could order them, but uh, so I'll have to get those to him. And then Minnie Mouse, which is so cute because I just bought um, June a Minnie Mouse beach towel for when we go swimming. I'll be putting her in the pool a little bit, but not a lot. But I got her a little bathing seat and a little sun hat so her little face don't get sunburned. Um, and it's a Minnie Mouse one. So that was so cute. And then this has got Mickey, Goofy, and Donald. These might be meant for Jesse, but I'm going to keep them because I love stickers. Uh, I need to make a sticker book because I'm basically just collecting stickers at this point. I don't use them for anything, but I like have, I have a big baggie full of stickers. <laughs> but thank you, Summer, for that. And thank you, Kathy, also. And then for a birthday happy mail, I got this in the mail. I literally just put this on my wish list the day before it came, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think she knew it was on my wish list. I think she just sent it to me to be kind. But this is from Llama Mama Kayla. I'll link her channel down below. Uh, and she sent me the... Kawaii, I can't ever say that. Crochet Garden, which makes us happy. They're just string of pearls, which is what I'm growing. I got a bunch of plants. I love plants. I'm a plant person. <laughs> but I already flipped through here, and I pretty much want to make everything that's in here. I thought about maybe just starting at the front and just making everything. But I don't have any floral wire, and every single one of these patterns needs floral wire. So I got to get some of that. <laughs> but um, I love this little worm. <laughs> and a little caterpillar. And one of the first ones I want to make, if I don't go in order... And actually, I was going to start this until I realized it needed floral wire. So I decided to wait until I can buy some. And that is... Uh, I'm not saying I got to hide the pattern. <laughs> the strawberry plant. It's so cute. I love strawberries. I don't know why. It's just so cute. and um, But it needs a lot of floral wire. Because each one of those little strawberry things and the leaves have a piece of wire in them. So that you can pose them and stuff. But that was so sweet of her. I already, she texted me actually. Um, and told me that it was delivered. Or available for pickup. And so I, I messaged her back. And it was just so sweet. That she um, bought me that book. I love these patterns. This girl, what was her name again? Melissa, yeah. Melissa Bradley. She makes the cutest patterns. I think there's a picture of her in the back of the book. Yeah, right here. She's got the other Kawaii book that I have. And I love the way it's like separated by colors. I guess it's cool. But she just has the cutest patterns ever. So, thank you so much, Kayla, for that. And then I got my bag labels. I needed some more that upside down. I gotta cut them. And the people ask me all the time what company I get these from. It's an Etsy shop. And it's called Ever Emblem. It used to be called... Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. It had a different name. I can't remember now. Anyways, they had a different name and they changed it to Ever Emblem. They have an Etsy and they have a, their own website as well. I just keep ordering through Etsy because it's I can just go hit the buy again thing. Um, 
but she, they are, she's very nice, uh, and I always never have any complaints, and, uh, they're beautiful labels, and you can buy them already cut, it just costs, I think, four or five or six dollars more, so I just cut them myself to save a little bit of money, um, and yeah, I usually order 40 at a time, right, I can't remember how many I order at a time, maybe 80, it's, yeah, two sheets of 40, I think, so I order 80 at a time usually, um, and they're awesome. You can buy iron-on ones from her or sew-on. I use the sew-on ones because I feel like they're sturdier than iron-on. Um, but yeah, and she's got all kinds of different designs and stuff that you can use. Or you can use your own logo or you can use stuff that she offers. And she's got different shapes and stuff. So definitely check her out. I'll link her down below. Very great um, label person. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all the crochet related stuff. Next, um, because I, I put some clips in the other day of my birds. Well, they're not my birds, but my local birds. Um... A lot of people seem to be interested in that. But I love um, putting out bird feeders and watching the birds. It's just fun. <laughs> but uh, what I did to help me identify birds, because, you know, everybody knows, like, the basic birds, <laughs> like a robin and uh, cardinals and stuff. But uh, some birds, you know, are hard to tell just by looking at them what they are. So um, what I did is I went on to thrift books. This was probably a couple of years ago. And I looked up for books for Tennessee birds, because where I live. So I found this book that is um, all Tennessee birds. And it's just a little field guide. It's got a big old section about how to attract birds to your yard. And then the other half of the book is all the different birds. And then, like, information about them, what they look like. The only thing I wish that it did differently is I wish it had a picture of male and female. Because a lot of birds, the male and female look completely different. Like cardinals. Um, the red cardinal everybody thinks of is the male bird. The girl cardinal is brown. And uh, she looks just like the male except she doesn't have that little thing on her head. But And a lot of the um, warblers and um, finches and stuff, the males are really bright colored and pretty and then the girls are brown. <laughs> but it's because the boys uh, need to be attractive to mate and all that stuff. But uh, it's got all kinds of woodpeckers and the warblers, it's crows, just all the local birds in Tennessee is listed on here and I'm sure there's books like this for every state and other countries um so that's what I did nice little field guide and then I also got this one <laughs> this is uh the U.S. uh northern North America so Canada's in here too um and it's field guide of the birds of North America this is a much more detailed book but I absolutely love the pictures that's in this it's got just really nice pictures and this is fun to just flip through. And then it's got the information over here about the birds and where they're located and their, where they're at different times of the year and stuff. And it's just really cool. So this covers all of the United States and Canada. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think it's got a little bit of Mexico in there. I don't think it shows, it doesn't like talk a lot about, maybe it does. Maybe they just don't have a lot of birds. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, see that one's got a lot in Mexico. Can you see that? <laughs> I wonder what kind of birds are in Mexico. That's interesting. And Canada. Like, we call Canadian geese Canadian geese, but do Canadians just call it geese? <laughs> like, it's their goose. Do they call our geese, like, Ameri you know, United States geese? American geese? I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird that we're called Americans when, like, I don't know if we're the United States of America, but technically... Mexico, Canada, and us are all North Americans. <laughs> so it's just confusing. But anyway, that's really hard stuff to explain to a five-year-old, well, six now, a six-year-old, because we have maps hanging up, so he's always asking questions about stuff. And I'm always trying to explain things to him because, you know, he's so little, he doesn't understand the concept of space. You know, he doesn't realize, like, how far away England is from us or that you can't drive there, you know? He, you know, in his little six-year-old brain, he doesn't understand that. And it's just crazy. He doesn't understand different languages. And I, I keep trying to tell him, oh, no, that's... He knows what Russian sounds like, and he knows what Spanish sounds like because of YouTube. But, like, he hears other languages, and he has no idea what that is, and I'm trying to tell him. And it's just funny. But anyways, I'm blabbing. So those are my books. I got both of these off of Thrift Books. They weren't very expensive. I actually think this one cost more than this one. I guess because it's specialized um, to state. And now I want to find one that is for trees and plants of Tennessee. Because we go on a lot of hikes and... Um, It'd be fun to like be able to identify the plants and stuff and also tell Jesse. Um, so I think I found one. 
I think I put it on my Amazon wish list. But I'll look on Thrift Books to see. I usually use my wish list as a way to remember things that I want. <laughs> so I just add everything in there. And then I can go back and look for it at better prices at other places. Um, Thrift Books is a really good place to get books for discounted. But only sometimes. Sometimes you can get them cheaper off of Amazon or somewhere else. Depending on the book and the rarity of it. Um, or how new it is. But I don't mind at all using used books. So when I go to Thrift Books, I usually... Because like, there's categories where you can do... Like, new practically bare you know like used but like practically new all the way down to like super used and i usually go down to almost super used because i don't mind if the pages are bent or if there's notes written in it but and this one i got a free bookmark and it's a s'more <laughs> it came in the book <laughs> but um so those are my bird books that i like to flip through this one i actually use a lot this one is more like just to look at because most of these birds I, I won't ever see. Because most of, you know, like, there's not that many in our area. Most of them seem to be, um, west and north of us. <laughs> but it's really cool. I'd actually like to have one of these that's for, like, Europe. Because it'd be cool to see the different birds. Because I know they got a lot of birds that we don't. And we got a lot of birds that they don't. So it's cool to, it'd be cool to see the difference. But I just love these pictures. It reminds me of, like, the old textbooks. Just, I just love it. I just love it. I love birds. Birds are cool. But anyways... There it is. So I just have a basic bird feeder I got at Walmart. I use a mixed bird seed. I used to have one of those square things that you put like a block of bird seed in, but then birds eat those. They can eat that like a day. <laughs> um, especially if a blue jay comes around, because blue jays eat a lot. They're big birds. They love peanuts, but they're also kind of mean. They're they're real aggressive birds to other birds. And they do eat eggs and baby birds of other birds. <laughs> so um they're kind of mean birds, but I mean, they're still a bird. They're still part of the circle of life, so, um, it's just part of it. But we have a lot of robins, uh, cardinals, uh, warblers. Uh, we sometimes get chickadees. We have blue jays every now and then. We have squirrels, <laughs> but squirrels can't get to the, um, bird feeder. They try, but they can't get there. Um, we have crows every now and then. Uh... Grackles, I think is what they're called. We've had brown-headed uh, cowbirds. Uh, we've had no hatches. I'm trying to think of everything that I found. Oh, uh, eastern bluebirds. I've seen those before out there. And then a bunch of just little brown ones that I'm not sure what they are. Because it's hard to tell sometimes because some of them look similar. Oh, uh, killdeers. I've seen killdeers. They're loud. <laughs> uh um, we've probably had thrashers, I just don't remember. Oh, mockingbirds, yeah. And mor morning doves, which did you know? I always thought morning doves was morning, like, early morning, but it's morning, like, when someone dies. I thought that was interesting. I also found out that there's a bird, <laughs> from flipping through here, there's a bird, um, called a yellow-bellied sapsucker, <laughs> which I thought was so funny. I th I th that sounds like, uh, an insult. <laughs> like, you would say, oh, you were a yellow-bellied sapsucker. <laughs> That was so funny. Anyways, this is a really long video. So I'm gonna hop off here and get it edited and um, get it ready for you guys to see. But anyways, I think I talked a lot. My throat was kind of hurting a little. <laughs> but I'm gonna hop off here and I'll see you guys in another video soon. Uh, stitch your s library <laughs> one and maybe some more. I don't know. But I'll see you guys in another video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.